Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Prince Ghosh, and I'm the founder and CEO of Boundary Labs. We're a startup spun out of research done at Case Western Reserve University. Today, I'm here to tell you how we're about to redefine aerodynamics. So the main problem that we're trying to address is the fact that wind energy still isn't cost effective enough to compete with fossil fuels on a consumer level. We really see this as a function of two major issues. One, wind turbines suffer from aerodynamic drag and are thereby less efficient. And two, at high wind speeds, turbines have to go through expensive braking cycles, leading to more wear and tear and higher operating costs. We saw this as an incredible industry to enter, really because of the fact that there's about, that there's about 80 gigawatts of wind currently installed in the US today, with over 50,000 plus operational turbines up and running. What we're really interested in, though, is the wind turbine blade market. This is a market that's projected to grow by about 43% by 2020, with over a 10% annual growth in installed capacity over the next five years alone. So what does our technology actually do? What we've developed is a flexible adhesive plasma actuator that regulates flow over wind turbine blades. That's a bit complex, so let me explain what it really does. What we've designed is a thin, flexible, solid state electrode that can be applied right to the surface of wind turbine blades as seen in this picture on the left. When activated, the electrodes ionize a thin layer of non-thermal plasma over the surface of the blade and control the airflow with electric fields. This results in an improvement of low wind speed performance by about 4% and also is able to protect the turbine at high wind speeds by actually inducing drag, thereby slowing down the RPMs of the turbine and leading to less braking costs. We currently have a provisional patent application filed for our technology and are working with our university's uh, IP venture clinic to file for a full patent application. So what does this really look like? In this image on the left, you can see a typical test wind turbine blade that we've developed uh, in, a wind in a wind tunnel test facility. What I really want to point your attention to is that turbulent dense air flowing on top of that turbine on the left, on top of the turbine blade on the left. Now this is that exact same turbine blade with our technology on and activated. With the use of electric fields, what we're able to do is generate that thin layer of plasma, delay the boundary layer separation point, increase the overall lift of the blade, and thereby maximum power output. We see our paths of success as broken down into five main stages. Phase one is a conception of an idea, uh, the development of a white paper, raising a bit of funding, and also going through the NSF i program, where we conducted over 40 customer interviews with really key executives and major wind energy producers and OEMs, speaking to the folks who would make the executive decisions on the business and technical side of whether this technology was feasible or not. Stage two is where we're at right now. Over the past few months and into the summer, we'll be conducting extensive R&D testing focused on degradation and optimization in partnership with NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. Phase three is the first time our tech goes up and on a turbine. We're seeking to partner with a wind energy producer to have our actuators up and on blades in lieu of stage four, where we'll be able to get our actuators on an entire wind farm, targeting turbines that were bought under older power purchase agreements and that are smaller in size, about the 100 to 150 kilowatt range, so that the turbine operators can maximize the amount of energy output on those turbines before their 20-year lifespan is over. Our eventual and final goal, though, is stage five. What we want to do is eventually partner up with an OEM so that our technology can be integrated straight into the wind turbine blade design. In terms of financials, this is really broken up into three major segments. Phase one is where we're at right now, proof of concept and customer discovery. We're all money won and raised through R&D, where all money won and raised goes straight towards R&D. Phase two is where we'll be this summer and into the next year of a wind operator partnership, where we'll be making a, cert, uh, we'll be making a profit based off of individual revenue uptake on each installed turbine, but we'll be overall cash negative because all that money is gonna continue straight into R&D and optimization of our technology in lieu of stage three, our third final stage. At this point, we'll be cash positive because all of our individual in-house manufacturing and R&D will be eased back as we transition into an IP license of our technology straight with a wind turbine OEM. So Siemens, Gamesa, GE, so on and so forth. Um, the value proposition that we're putting forward is really two-faced. Phase one is we're able, to we're able to offer enhanced control over blade velocity. And phase two is we're able to reduce aerodynamic drag over turbines with no moving parts whatsoever. 
This results in two things, decreased costs and increased revenue. The major factors in decreased costs are lower brake usage and maintenance times, and those for increased revenue are widened cut-in and cut-out speed ranges, increased operational time, and maximization of energy output. This is a typical wind turbine power curve that any wind energy producer is used to seeing. Now this is that same curve with our technology on and activated. By lowering the minimum cut-in speed and increasing the maximum cut-out speed for these turbines, we're able to maximize the amount of area under the curve and juice out every single kilowatt of energy that these turbines can produce. Through extensive industry analysis, we've come to realize that some of the major competitors in the wind energy industry fight for even a 1% improvement in aerodynamic efficiency. We're confident that the 4% we'll be able to offer will be strongly adopted by the market. What I'm really excited to tell you about, though, is some of the societal impacts our technology has. If 100% of wind turbines in America can have, can have our actuators on them, this will lead to an equivalent of 16 coal power plants being displaced off the grid, 5 million plus cars worth of emissions taken off the road, which generates enough excess energy to power the state of Illinois nine times over. Some of our major competition on the direct side comes from a small startup up in Connecticut focused on using similar boundary layer manipulation technology to control, to control airflow. Through the IP that we filed, we've been able to not only do that, but also offer protection from high wind speeds by actually inducing drag rather than reducing it and slowing down the RPMs that those turbines have to go through. On the indirect competition slide, a lot of that comes from advancements from major OEMs focused on pitch control improvements, lighter materials, and mechanical improvements. The big thing here is that while all of these advancements are small and steady, they're, impossible, they're nearly impossible to be integrated into the entire existing turbine fleet that's up and functional right now. That's where our technology comes in. Some of the really interesting use cases uh, for defense that I want to quickly touch base about today are really the traditional active flow control over mid-sized UAVs, so the Reaper over here on the left, improving aerodynamic efficiency to lower fuel costs. But then this case on the right over here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a chance to speak to a few Air Force pilots at RPE, uh, Department of Energy Conference we were at. And we found out from them that when performing mid-air refueling maneuvers, a lot of the wake and wash of the airflow coming off of the boom system, so that cylinder you see from the tanker to the jet, causes a lot of unsteady turbulence for the fighter jet pilot themselves. We're seeking to apply our actuators onto the boom to smoothen and streamline that flow, making it safer for the pilots and making the overall fueling system more efficient. We think that we can do so with a total budget of about $15,000, with the main uh, line item right here coming in through wind tunnel rent time uh, over at NASA Glenn Research Center, like I mentioned earlier. We're a team comprised of undergraduate, masters, and PhD students in mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, data science, material science, and business. We're also advised by a phenomenal team of business advisors, strategic advisors, legal mentors, and technical advisors, uh, particularly Dr. Mario Garcia Sanz, um, our technical advisor, who's a world-renowned expert in energy and control systems and a current technical director at RPE, the US Department of Energy's Advanced Research Projects Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Prince Ghosh, and I'm the founder and CEO of Boundary Labs. I have a vision that one day, every single wind turbine in America will have our technology on it. I'm hoping that each and every one of you can join me on that journey. Thank you so much.